Minister Arun Jaitley has been given additional charge of the Defence Ministry and the buzz in the corridors of power is that the portfolio will be reassigned when the Prime Minister announces a full cabinet reshuffle. But irrespective of who holds the defence portfolio, Manohar Parikar, who just resigned as Defence Minister, leaves a long unfinished agenda. Ritu Bhuyan and Arib Sherwani tell us what's at play. Manohar Parikar has been busy these last 27 months as Defence Minister. The one task that has taken up most of his time has been getting the bureaucracy at South Block to agree to his ambitious new defence procurement policy, which will set in motion the process for acquiring modern weapon systems for the Indian Armed Forces. As he hands over charge to Finance Minister Arun Jaitley, he leaves one gaping hole in this mission, getting the Babus to agree on the strategic partnership aspect of defence procurement. The chapter on strategic partnership in the policy proposes preferential contract rights to an Indian private company for the building of big-ticket defence systems. However, there is still non-consensus with the Defence Ministry on the model to be followed. This means that for starters, a 60,000 crore rupee order to manufacture future infantry combat vehicles is stuck in limbo. And heavyweights like Tata Motors, Mahindra Defence, Reliance Defence, L&T and Tata Power SED will have to wait to see who walks away with it. The other item high on Parikar's unfinished agenda is the proposal to acquire defence platforms worth 3 lakh crore rupees. This includes a 40,000 crore rupee S-400 missile defence system, 494 T-90 tanks and 83 light combat aircraft Tejas fighters. Just the contracting process for these orders is expected to take 2 to 3 years and that is now in the lap of the next defence minister. But the biggest call that will have to be taken is on the process for procuring defence equipment, which can take up to 10 years to finalise. Just like the Atomic and Space Commission, we need to uh, take uh, defence procurement out of MOD into something called a Defence Commission, which has a senior technical person as, as the uh, chairperson. The new Defence Minister will also have to convince foreign investors, who have so far been just spectators, to establish assembly lines for state-of-the-art defence platforms in India. Global investors uh, will go wherever they see uh, revenues and profits. Now here, uh, the problem is that the defense procurement process has such a long lead time that it frustrates the best of players. So all of them are here with their Indian uh, branches, but uh, most of the time they're just uh, 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 filling up the procedures and uh, chasing up the ministry, waiting for the orders. In all this, time is of essence because given the slow pace of procurement, defense spending has been lower than the budget allocations. Just last year, Ministry of Defence returned 7,000 crores back to the government. Meanwhile, Indian armed forces are using outdated and outmoded weapon systems. In New Delhi, Ritu Bhuya.